Chairman Robert, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. I would like to thank the organizers, the energetic Ukrainian uh, ladies, uh, for this opportunity to address you and to, to share some thoughts on what's going on. Uh, if you are asking yourself why you are here and what is connecting the EU contemporary Greeks uh, with Ukraine and with Ukrainians, I would like to ask you to think about three things. First and foremost, that both of our nations uh, are freedom loving nations. You've been fighting for your freedom for centuries. Uh, Greece was under the Ottoman rule for four uh, centuries. And it's the same thing with, with Ukraine. Secondly, uh, Ukrainians are choosing the democratic path, uh, how, to, how to govern itself, how, how to develop and how to find a place in this, uh, under the sun uh, in a democratic way, not in another way. And you are cherishing democratic traditions. And we are, possibly it's not the accidental that we are uh, here on the previous uh, street uh, nearby. And so one is, just look at me, I'm, I'm among those Greeks who settled in uh, Ukrainian territory in Crimea some 2500 years ago. Uh, before my mother, uh, the old line uh, back to the centuries uh, was a uh, Greek one. My father total Greek. Um, and just I cherish my Greek, uh, my, my, my Greek heritage. Heritage. And uh, it's just sometimes, sometimes funny that my son coming from school, uh, seeing that he's Ukrainian, and I said, yes, you're a Ukrainian citizen, you, you, you should love this country, but you uh, never forget uh, your Greek roots and roots to the great uh, civilization, at least folk civilization that was brought by, by the ethnic Greeks. So, as I said, uh, the first connection between our worlds was in, five, uh, in the 5th century before Christ, uh, when the Greeks uh, settled in uh, Hersonesos in Crimea, now occupied by Russians. Uh, if you have a look at history, uh, it was the Greeks, I mean Byzantines, who the first, for the first time mentioned Rus, uh, the center in Kiev, in 839. And then uh, the uh, prince of Kiev was uh, baptized uh, in 988 uh, before his marriage to the Byzantine princess Anne. And from that time we were connected not just by, by the, uh, this uh, you know, family roots, uh, by orthodoxy as well. Uh, we've got the um, copy of the uh, Mihala um, Ecclesia of Constantinople in, in Kiev. And it's interesting, I've just been to the lecture of one of the professors who is uh, researching the graffiti on the walls of Hagia uh, Sophia in Kiev. And uh, the scriptures dating back to the uh, uh, 11th century shows the connection between that language to the Ukrainian one. And that's why all this myth that the uh, Ukrainian language was uh, artificial and was uh, invented by the Austro-Hungarian uh, chief of staff is absolutely ridiculous and uh, has no, no real ground. Uh, Kiev Rus uh, uh, lost its independence uh, in 2040 when the Mongols uh, came to our land and conquered, uh, conquered the, the land. Uh, what is Ukraine? The title, the name, the toponym of Ukraine uh, was mentioned firstly in 11, uh, 11 uh, just a second, uh, 87, 40 years before Moscow was, uh, was established by the uh, prince, uh, one, one of the offsprings of the Kiev uh, king. And actually, uh, the founder of Moscow is buried in, in um, the Kiev Pichersko Lavra uh, in, in Kiev, not in Moscow. Um, if we have a look at the language, uh, what, it, it, what the Ukrainian language consists of, it's uh, something like 84% of lexicon is closer to the Belarusian, so we have got a strong connection between two nations. And then Polish language, something like 70%. And then Slovak language and Russian language, 68%. If you compare uh, the, um, the similarity of English and Dutch language, it's 68. And the same thing with Ukrainian and Russian. So Ukrainian and Russian languages are completely different. There are some, uh, uh, some lexicon uh, shared by two languages, but uh, it's not the same language. In, in, in Ukrainian language, it's not the artificially created later on. Um, What's interesting, in 1798, the Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian uh, poet translated uh, Eliada, the Greek uh, poem, into the Ukrainian, into the literature of Ukrainian. 
and it was just one year before uh, Pushkin, the, the greatest uh, Russian poet, was born. And actually, it was Pushkin who created uh, the contemporary Russian language. Before that, there was no such a, 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 such a language. And the Russian elite was speaking in French. So, uh, I just, what, why I'm uh, talking about it? If there are some myths, uh, and unfortunately, the, the Greeks uh, and the other Europeans, they don't remember that the Ukrainians are their cousins. One thing, and second thing, we've got more in common in terms of history, connections, and the, the philosophy of life than, than it appears from the first side. Secondly, what I would like to address uh, is the, the roots of uh, imperialism, the Russian imperialism. And it gets back to the 15th century, when the king uh, John III uh, actually created the ideology uh, based on the exceptionist and then the expansionism. Uh, he was trying to gather, as he, the Russian called, the Russian lands, or Rus lands. Uh, and actually at that time uh, Russia was not named Russia, it was Moscow Kingdom. Uh, so was, he was trying to legitimize his, uh, his, um, uh, his, his conquest for the lands belonging to Kiev. Secondly, he chose the, uh, the new title, the Grand Prince of All Rus, trying to show that he, he is trying to get the lands of the, uh, the Ukrainian and Lithuanian Kingdom. Uh, he was just legitimizing uh, this, uh, this context. Thirdly, he, uh, he used the new symbols. He actually uh, has stolen the symbol, the double-headed uh, eagle from, from the Byzantine Empire. And he was uh, using it be just because uh, he was married to the niece of uh, the last uh, Constantinople um, Empire, Constantine the Eleventh. And uh, the last one, and very important to you Greeks, uh, the concept of the so-called Third Rome. So Russians believe that the, after the fall of the Constantinople, it is the Moscow that is the center of orthodoxy. And their orthodoxy is the best and the right one. And the rest is, is, is just, uh, just you no know, sort of, uh, the, uh, how to say, the spoiled uh, religion. And these ideas were driven uh, the Russian Empire for centuries. Until Catherine the Great, and actually she was of uh, German origin, uh, uh, was found of the so-called Greek project. She, want, uh, she wanted to reconquer the Constantinople and re-establish the Byzantine Empire with her uh, grandson Constantine, and he was going to be the Constantine the Twelfth, as uh, the empire of the Byzantine Empire. Uh, junior to the Russian Empire, and uh, the other, uh, the other uh, grandson of her was named Alexander after Alexander the Great, and he was uh, portrayed as the, the protector of the, the Greek Empire. And what's interesting, uh, she failed uh, with, with the Turks. Turks uh, won that uh, that war, but uh, she she got the, one of the best prizes uh, of her rule. She got uh, Crimea. She conquered Crimea uh, in, in such a way. First of all, uh, the Ukrainian Cossacks who helped her uh, to, to fight with the Turks been destroyed. Their stronghold in the siege was destroyed. Uh, secondly, uh, they pushed, uh, she pushed the, the Han in uh, Crimea, Crimean Tatar Khan, uh, to become independent. And then, uh, with, with uh, the exodus of Greeks, Armenians, and Georgians, and my, my predecessors as well, to the Azov Sea, she undermined the rule of the Han, uh, because Greeks, Armenians, and Jews were the, uh, the backbone of the economy, economical and uh, the administrative life of the Crimean Tatar uh, kingdom. And she weakened this kingdom and in some, uh, some five or seven years uh, get it under, under her control. It was the first time uh, when she got Crimea, and Crimea became Russian, I would say, in, in brackets. And secondly, it was the first time when the, uh, the nations were deported, because the Greeks were not willing to leave their land without, uh, you know, without any good reason. And uh, what's interesting, uh, that one third of those who left from Crimea died in the first year. She betrayed uh, the Greeks and Armenians and the Georgians and Jews because she promised the lands near Odossi, where now Mariupol, where Greeks are living now, 
But uh, in the first place, she wanted to, uh, she was um, trying to push them into the deeper, uh, so we call, we call it uh, the uh, wild step, the wild uh, terrain. And Greeks uh, uh, were not happy, and uh, after some quarrels with the, with the, with the queen, they were returned uh, to, 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 to that land. Um, the, the contemporary Russian imperialism is based uh, in just, uh, oh, just, 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 just a bit uh, about the communist ideology. The communists were thinking about the exceptionists as well. Uh, firstly, uh, the, the Soviet Union was the first uh, state uh, for the peasants and workers, and that's why they were legitimizing their expansion by, by military means, by ideology, by subversion into the, uh, the other lands. And uh, this uh, worked uh, until the 1991, we, we, we remember uh, this date, uh, the date when the Soviet Union was, was uh, uh, collapsed actually, and the uh, new, uh, new countries, but actually not new, but uh, the old ones, reappeared on the map, political map of Europe. Now Putin went he back to the power and gripped the control over the um, economy. He just thought uh, about the new expect in, uh, expansionism, the new way, the new uh, way how to regain, as he thinks, the geopolitical status for Russia. And uh, uh, the concept was uh, forged, uh, the concept of the so-called Russian world or Russian peace, because in Russian, uh, Mir uh, translates into the two things, uh, world and, and peace. And there were three layers to this concept. Uh, first, uh, for the domestic audience. As, as if you have a look at the, uh, the, uh, the demography of Russia, you will see that the ethnic uh, Russians or Slavic uh, people is, is a minority in Russian uh, Federation. Even in Moscow, they got something like 20% of Muslims from the Caucasian region. But they need uh, to, to find an ideology how to connect these people, how to make them uh, work for the, the, the whole state. And the Russian world is, uh, is one, of, uh, one of the aims of this uh, concept, is to, to get them uh, together in, in this project. It's based on the Russian language uh, and Russian culture, which is absolutely okay. Nobody is against uh, Russian language and Russian culture, no way.